Welcome back to ASIS 2017, securityguytv.com. We're right here at the ASIS booth. That's number 1613. My next guest, one of my favorite companies and favorite products, Indigo Vision, indigovision.com for my podcast listeners, I-N-D-I-G-O-V-I-S-I-O-N.com. And Mr. Jeff Swanson, welcome to the show, Jeff. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, for people who don't, don't know Indigo Vision, tell us what you guys do. So, founded in 1994, we're an end-to-end -end solutions provider in this video surveillance 94? focused on IP. Yes, sir. That's like ancient history. We barely had cameras back absolutely. then. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. It's a great thing. The experience, the expertise and the compression, the end-to-end -end software, complete offering range from cameras, NVRs, to video software. So in our industry, when we're looking at the end-to-end -end solution, we want to definitely make sure that we have every component, including our featured product, Cyber Vigilant, for our cybersecurity threats that we're seeing in the industry today. Uh, Cyber Vigilant is a great name. Tell us what that does. So what that does is it protects your system against anomalies. We take our 23 years of experience in IP video and apply that to the, the hacks and the threats that are out there today. So within Cyber Vigilant, we attach that to the edge based of the system, and we're monitoring for any anomalies, so uh, legal user access, any type of hacks, okay. SMTP, things of that nature. Now so describe describe the edge for people, because this is kind of a, <clears throat> not, not totally new, but it's a newer term people are yep, using. Absolutely. It's very visual, mm -hmm. and I think when you say it, people understand what it means, but kind of boil that down for people. Sure, with, it. with the Indigo Vision product line, we feature a, a catch or a buzzword of what we call distributed network architecture, or DNA. So what that allows us to do is work without a centralized server in our system. So each of our devices, whether it be a camera, whether it be an NVR, whether it be a client workstation, has a degree of smarts and a, a less taxing uh, requirement for right. the network without the server. So with all of those particular functions, when we talk about edge devices that can be our camera, that can be any of our switches in the IDF, and any of the things that make up the traditional cloud for the network. Now, are you guys manufacturers? Yes, we are, sir. And uh, <clears throat> what's the highest uh, K, K you're going at right now, 4K? Or? Yeah, well, we have a 20 megapixel or 5K camera, 4K right. camera, and anything down in below to the, the 1K, 2K, so complete range. And do the smart uh, analytics reside on the camera? Or This is one thing I always have trouble getting my head around, right? Yep. A camera is a computer nowadays. That is correct. Basically, and it's just plugged into the network. It's another directory, all right, for my nieces and nephews who don't get this stuff. Uh, and do the smart analytics reside in the cameras nowadays, or are they back on the network? Well, there's two ways to do that. So you can have a server-based analytic, which would add another complex layer to the system, but in our particular solution, we have edge-based or camera-based analytics. So in our BX range and our smart core range, or what we refer to as the ultra camera series, we actually have five embedded in, uh, analytics that are programmed on the web page of the camera and reside at the camera level. Now, <clears throat> describe your typical uh, vertical market, who are some of your clients, type of clients and in industries? Yep. So for us, it's a, a broad spectrum of government type clients, both federal and municipal. We uh, also do a lot in oil, gas, energy, transportation, city surveillance systems, and casinos. Uh, smart city stuff? Absolutely, absolutely. This is something I'm really interested in. Um, describe how, if, if Indigo Vision is participating in a smart city, uh, how's that process work? I mean, are you usually brought in as a contractor to the giant design guy or is it individually and you're saying you know you're now the guy tasked with designing the camera system for the cities so i always wondered about that in the old days the engineering company the construction company hired all the vendors and they came in and did their cameras and they did access controls individual right but now it's really you're more involved in the actual design, right? That's correct. We're spending a lot of time with our law enforcement counterparts, uh, doing a lot of site surveys, doing a lot of providing the, the expert level of camera placements, what kind of design, what kind of network resources you have. Uh, cities are, are quite challenging. When we have buildings, whether it be the courthouse, the city hall, those are usually connected with fiber optics and, and good right. connectivity. When we're looking at the areas that crime and the areas of concern for them, bus terminals, we look at city parks, things of that nature, um, where we are, we're assisting them in expertise with wireless network applications, gunshot detection inter integration, and the things that will help the agency become more prepared at the response point. So in our, in our sorry, we start with the dispatch center and then we work our way out to the points. Right? Okay, now the wireless applications, are, are these the, is this the new trend or we, I, I just feel safer with the good old fashioned hard wire, but the technology is really here to make it almost as good? Yes, agreed. And, and one of the biggest, uh, I'd say, black holes for infrastructure connectivity is do we dig up the park, do we dig up the parking lot, do we do things of that nature? And if it's a 100 year old conduit, 
what good is it maybe, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So with the, the addition of secure Wi-Fi, whether that be mesh or point to point, um, we've been able to actually build city networks for surveillance. Uh, we isolate those traditionally from their data networks. Uh, you can go mesh or you can go point to point. With the advantage of mesh, it's as the city grows their camera needs and, and functional needs, then we can just add more points to the wireless network. And Tell me what, uh, you know, when I look at your products and I've talked to you guys a couple times, right? I get the idea that it's easy. That you make it easy, in other words. Indigo Vision makes it easy. Correct. As opposed to, uh, here's my menu of 5,000 cameras, which one do you want? Uh, dude, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you, right? The whole interaction with the personnel and the staff just seems like it's much more workable and easy. What, what distinguishes you guys from the other, other companies in your, in your space? Mainly DNA. So our distributor network architecture and, and serverless architecture, if you will, is, is very different in North America. Okay. Most of the, the competition, the folks that are distri you know, displaying here at ASIS this year, have a centralized server or a centralized bottleneck in our case. Okay. By lending ourselves to having no server and uh, edge-based uh, DNA, we're allowed to work in both the most complicated networks as well as the basic layer two network. Yeah. So with our software offering, we, we tier that into three categories. We have a, a light, a pro, and an enterprise level. And we also balance our catalog of cameras and storage to do the same thing. So if we have a small system for the liquor store, we have a very you know brick and mortar 20 channel uh, right. type system with cameras that are appropriate for that. We move into the next tier of 50 cameras and below in our professional, and we move into our enterprise level in the ultra, which allows us to be very dynamic, very quick, and, and very easy for our integrators, our consultants, and our end user customers to understand exactly what they need out of our catalog. So talk to me about resiliency and, and security in that sort of design, right? So I'm not hardwiring it back to my command center, hardwiring it to a computer, streaming it up to the cloud. It's, it's almost like a virtual camera system in one way. And since it's not really connected to one central point, doesn't it make it more secure? It does in a sense. We have the hardening capabilities that we can put at the actual chipset right. and the internet connections that happen at the camera level. But this is where cyber vigilant comes in. You know, with the 23 years of experience in the IP video world, what we've monitored in the industry are these backdoor threats and the multiple cameras and the open architecture yeah. world that we're in today. We we can't control every single input that we put on the VMS. Right. With cyber vigilant, we've now taken a second step. We've used the experience of the database inside the control center VMS, and we're allowed to basically monitor the traffic there. So I understand if that camera's supposed to be there, if that client's supposed to be there. We also understand that if any of these external things happen, you know, illegal accesses, any types of things of that nature, cyber vigilant is built in to be that secondary monitoring piece. So whether we're on a hardwire LAN, whether we're on a WAN or on a wireless environment, we have this hardening capability that happens uh, at the edge. Fantastic, cyber vil vil vigilant, <laughs> indigovision.com. One of my favorite products, you guys check them out. And their staff are the nicest people, very easy to work with. You guys are going to like them. Tell us your booth number again. 1023. Good for you. I forget my booth number all the time. But I'm in ASIS 1613, so come on by and say hi. And we'll be back in a minute here on securityguidetv.com. Thanks. Take Thank us out, Mr. Sean.